All right, so today we've got um, a project by uh, Joseph Salcido and J.D. Lester on a software-defined network and their advisors, Dr. Schlieb, I'm sure they've worked extremely hard and tirelessly on this project, so uh, please give them your full attention and enjoy. So we did our project on software-defined networking. First, we're going to go over the problem, then the fundamental characteristics to SDN, and then the three layers of abstraction in SDN, the distributed state abstraction, the forwarding model, and the specification abstraction. Then Josie's going to talk about penetration testing within SDN. She used a framework called Project Delta to implement, um, to execute well-known test cases on our SDN environment. And then she's going to demo that. And then we're going to go over industry, real-world real deployments, and then finish off with the conclusion and future work. So networks are hard to manage. Often the network administrator has to implement high-level network-wide policy to low-level configuration. And this makes it, this is especially hard in large-scale networks. And it's more error-prone because there's a large network that a network administrator has to configure. And it's, it's really hard at large-scale networks. So this makes it harder to deploy new applications on the network. And as a result, reduces the time that network applications can be deployed on the network. Secondly, networks are hard to evolve. Every network protocol is a distributed system, independent, and it makes for a much better model to have a global view of the network that the network protocols can then be built on top of. So the three fundamental characteristics of SDN are to virtualize the network. So instead of giving the network administrator the physical network to manage and provision, we're going to give him an abstract model of the uh, physical network. And then the network operating system finds out how to implement the high level policy down to the low level configuration. So it automates the process for the network administrator. Secondly, the separation of the control and data planes. So we take the control out of the individual switches and centralize it onto a network operating system. And from there, network. Uh, Network applications can then be built on top of that global view of the network. Lastly, generalize the forwarding model. So create an abstraction there for forwarding that can, that can um, be implemented on all network hardware. So on the left, you see the architecture of a traditional switch. On the right, you see software-defined networking. On the left, there's custom hardware, an operating system that runs many distributed protocols. But with SDN, you take the control out of the switches, you centralize it onto one network operating system that has a global view of the network. And from there, you can build network applications on top of that global view. So this is a, the architecture of my demo that I will present soon. So we see the network operating system, the switches. So each switch, there's three switches, one host connected to each switch. I'm going to provision, provision connectivity between them through a single web application. So I'm going to go ahead and demo that. Just bear with me. Log into my Ubuntu machine. So I'm going to create the network topology using a script. So that's the bottom of the uh, diagram that I just showed. So I created the network topology and you see that the host one cannot communicate to host two. And you can also verify this. I just verified it using ping, but you can view the flow tables of these switches to see that there are no flows on the switches. So I'm going to populate these flow tables to make it so there's connectivity between the network. So um, I'm going to use a script to install flows onto the switches. So now if you view the switches flow tables, they're populated. And this is the basis of OpenFlow. You can, it, it follows a match action paradigm where it matches on packet headers and it takes an action on the headers, uh, on the packets. So the headers can be the input port to the switch. It can be the data link uh, source and destination, the data link type, 
the network source, network destination, TCP source destination. The actions can be to forward out of a port, send it to the controller for further processing, or to decrement the uh, time to live field. So you see all the flow tables of the switches are now populated. So I'm gonna verify that the hosts can now ping each other. In other words, communicate to each other. And you see that host two is sending a response back to H1. So that's my first demo. Now I'm going to um, add the controller and the web application to this and configure the network from the web application. So that was me just manually installing the flows, but with the controller, it allows network administrator to configure the network from a higher level abstraction. So I'm going to start the web application and I'm going to go to the browser and view the web interface of the application. So this little box right here is where the network topology will show. Right now there's no network topology connected to the controller and I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to start the controller, the network operating system. And then I'm going to create the topology that connects to that connects to the um, give me one moment here. Okay, restart. Okay, so I'm gonna restart the web application. And then I'm going to start the controller. And then I'm going to start, and then I'm going to create the top the switches that communicate that connect to the network operating system. So now you see that the web application learns of the network dynamically, and from here you can configure the network. You see the interfaces to the network. So right now. There's nothing in the flow tables because I haven't configured it. I'm just going to verify that by trying to communicate. There's no response back between the two hosts. So if you go to the flow tables, you'll see that there is nothing in there, or maybe one. Okay, so that is not relevant to the connection. So I'm going to configure the network to enable connectivity. So now we'll see the if we go back to the flow tables that there are now new flows that enable connectivity. So on switch one, it will forward all local network, it will forward traffic to all local network hosts to the hosts and change the data link destination to the MAC address of the host. And it will route to other networks out the right gateway. So we see this on all the switches. So now if we ping between the two, then it works. So if I start a web, if I start a web server on host two, then we can see that H1 can get the page that I hosted on host two. And that's it for my demo. I'm going to go ahead and talk about the last layer of abstraction, the specification abstraction. So what we do is we get the, to make networks easier to provision, we give the network administrator an abstract view of the network. So the network administrator wants these two hosts to be on the same virtual network because they're part of the same application. And then it's the job of the network operating system to figure out how to make it uh, to implement it on the physical network. So it essentially automates that process. So it's a lot easier to um, deploy applications at a fast rate and it's a lot less error prone because a network administrator has to deal with all of this complexity 
all these different topologies. He needs to implement high level policy on low level configuration. And it's just a really hard process. So we're gonna get the network operating system, the software to do it for us. And how it does it is it basically figures out which port of which node that the, the hosts are, are connected to and it tunnels the data over the physical network. So it gives the application isolation and uh, it's much more scalable than VLAN because VLAN is only confined to 4,096 segments. And with this, it can scale to huge data center um, and huge data centers. So Josie's gonna talk about what she did with penetration testing. So I looked more into the security aspects of SCN. When this new network architecture is implemented, it'll be implemented at a large scale with thousands of tunnels and hundreds of switches. And traditional networks are very hard to manage in that aspect because there's just so much going on. Um, but in order to protect our networks and vulnerable uh, value of information being transmitted across those networks, we must know where the holes or vulnerabilities are. Uh, with such a large network, having one vulnerability could cause the collapse of an entire grid. We obviously don't want that, so we do what's called penetration testing. Penetration testing is the authorized testing of, uh, for security vulnerabilities within a network. Once these have been identified, it allows us to mitigate them so that way we don't have those collapses. Um, since SCN is so different in architecture, there are different types of vulnerabilities for us to look for, which means that traditional security testing and penetration testing won't work well on the new architecture. So we have to implement something new. Uh, within, within SDN, there are different vulnerabilities that are specific to SDN, but the two main ones that I looked into are within the control plane and the data plane. Within the control plane, if an intruder gets in, he will have access to the entire network and he can reroute it exactly how he wants, or she. And then within the data plane, they could be within the network already, listening to packets and be able to mimic them or spoof them and be able to see our information, reroute it without the users or even the service providers of knowing. So one type of penetration testing framework that's already out there is Delta. This is a framework that uh, for penetration testing of software defined networks. For our scenario, Delta was installed on a host and used against three virtual machines within that host. First I'm going to show you a scenario in which uh, we attack the ex ex execute exploitation in the control plane which will fail, which means that there is going to be a vulnerability there. This is Delta. This is how we drive it. Here you can see the, uh, this is where new exploitations will be running and we'll be able to see their status. This is the configuration file. Delta is very configurable for your individual network. And then this is our log which we'll be able to see what's happening behind the scenes in plain text. So first we scroll down and we'll see the different types of exploitations that can be ran. I'm going to do this one right here called a handshake without a hello message. It'll be happening within the control plane, which means the controller is attempting to make a new connection, but it won't, the switch will not respond correctly, so the, the controller should not create that connection, but it does anyway. So when we run it, we'll cue it, it'll pop up, it'll be running right here. We'll see the behind the scenes action right here. And we will see that it, dummy switch doesn't send the hello back, which means that it didn't respond correctly. But the connection still happens, which means the network failed, which means there's a vulnerability there. And we can see that within a Wireshark capture. The one to pay attention to, the packets to be paying attention to are up here. They're the open flow hello message sent from the controller. There is a response from the switch, but it's not the correct response, which means that the controller should not recognize that as a valid connection, but it does. And you can see that because there are further interactions on to the switch down on the data plane. So what's happening is the Delta is, send, is a, acting as a malicious application that sends a message to the controller to 
start this interaction, the controller will send this down through the open flow channel, which is a separate machine, which will pass it down to a switch on the data plane. This does not respond correctly, which means that connection should not happen anymore, but it does, meaning that there is that vulnerability. The next vulnerability that I will show you is on the data plane level. This one will pass, meaning that there's not a vulnerability present. We're going to select an invalid OXM value type. Give me a value. We'll queue it up. I'm running. And what's happening here is Delta is acting as a controller and sending messages down to the switch to try to implement a new flow, like those flow tables that JD showed us. Uh, those are what's controlling the network and controls where the traffic goes. So if the value is sent and it's accepted and it's the wrong value, that means that an intruder can overwrite memory and cause a lot of damage by through a reverse shell, etc. But the network passes, which means that there's not a vulnerability present. And we can see that within this Wireshark capture. And the packets of importance are here, where we see the open flow modification being sent to the from Delta down to the machine, the Mininet machine. But instead of accepting that flow, we get an error message back saying that when the switch attempted to validate this value, it was rejected because it does not recognize it. I mean, there's no vulnerability there, which means in this aspect, the network is secure. So that's all I have for Delta for right now. Uh, ways that we can... Penetration testing allows us to start the mitigation process, which will help us keep our network secure. Other ways we can do this is, well, in traditional networks, this might be a little bit harder because we have to find where the hole is and then go through the whole process of individual switches and individual configurations. But with this, we can create a new process at the control plane level and send it down to the data plane, meaning it's a matter of just changing software. Upgrades, changing a small line in a script that can be fixed rather quickly rather than waiting for the security to step in and say, no, we can't do this. It'd be a really quick fix instead. That would actually last. Um, another one that we have is a flow checker. It's a configuration verification tool. It acts within the network to check on the flows that have already been implemented to make sure that these are correct and matching the ones that are, should be there already. Now, the one thing that we need to hit, hit home on is that this is not just a new technology. This is something that's happening and is being implemented already. Uh, in fact, 10 years ago, well, 11 years ago now, in 2006, Stanford already created what's called Ethane, which is an SDN um, platform. Now, Google is even using it. Uh, they use it to interconnect their data centers and allows them to control traffic better and make everything quicker for end users, etc. Now, this study in 2006 showed that while we were having smaller growth before, it is only expected to grow more, and the SDN market should reach about $70.4 billion worth of value by 2024. This means that, well, this is because not only is this emerging technology, this is happening, and it's catching on so quickly because people are starting to understand that this is not just a hardware world anymore, this is a software world. And when people catch on to that more, it'll be able to grow even quicker. Um, we started out with this project that we didn't really know anything about. Traditional networking is very, very different from this new architecture. And it's not traditionally taught to lower level classes. Uh, this, it presented a lot, a lot of obstacles. But we think there's a lot of value in this, specifically because it's going to allow the technological world to grow so much quicker because it allows innovation quicker. Yeah, so it, um, it required us to do a lot of research because we've never operated networks ourselves, so we had to do a lot of reading. So SDN is what people are doing now, so it required us to understand the history of networking 
and uh, the problems of legacy networks, the problems of today, and the networking industry just over its history. And so, yeah, as Josie said, not many undergraduates study SDN. It's, um, it's what everybody's doing out in the real world, so out of here, we have to read what they're doing to understand their, their problems. So it really taught us how to start off with something we knew nothing about and do a lot of research and try to understand from their perspective their problems and then try to relate that to what we're learning here at JMU. So we advocate SEN to be taught at the undergraduate level and most of all we had a great time doing this project. It was very valuable and yeah, it was a great project. So um, future work. Uh, deployment of SDN and of VN network virtualization with OpenStack would be a great project. That is our rec number one recommendation as to what students should do next. That would be a really great project. And then also further investigating the Delta's functionality. So we found this great framework, uh, Delta, so we may as well use it to, to uh, test other OpenFlow implementations and create our own test cases. And then investigate other network operating systems. The one that I use for my demo is Pox. It's kind of a simple, simplistic um, SDN controller that was used at the early stages, but now you're seeing the emergence of more advanced network operating systems such as Onos and Open Daylight. And then further research into how businesses are using SDN for their use cases. So everybody's hopping on board with SDN to deliver services quicker to their customers. And there's so much out there to research and, and, and do a project on. And then investigate SDN domain specific languages. So OpenFlow is kind of a low level language. There are high level uh, languages to, to implement network applications such as P4, Frenetic, Ethane, Netcat. And then lastly, investigate network virtualization platforms. OpenStack Neutron is a really good one. It's open source. VMware NSX I don't think is open source, but it's also a very good one. And so thank you, thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed our project as much as we did it, like enjoyed doing it, and uh, thank you. Josie and JD uh, have done a wonderful job. And in, independent of how much hard time I gave them, I am very proud of what they have been able to achieve. And the way they have presented this made me very proud, extremely proud. So. Oh, we'd like to thank Dr. Sweeb and Safa for helping us with everything we had to do. Back to them. <laughs> and the fact that you guys did this in this in 30 minutes is very remarkable. <laughs> oh, yeah. Any questions? Yeah, any very questions? Remarkable. That means you must have rehearsed at least one time. Maybe <laughs> once or like seven. <laughs> so are there any questions any for questions? us? Any questions? Thank you. Okay. <laughs>